Okay, we are, we are here in Spain with Mr. Jack Levin. Thanks for your time, sir. And first question is, what is the roadmap for the next 18 months? 18 months? Uh, well, we're so, we have so many things going on uh, in 18 months. is. Uh, It's like five years in uh, in crypto years, like dog years. So it's a pretty long time frame. But I would say uh, uh, definitely working on uh, X1 mainnet launch. We're integrating Zenblox into X1. We're working on the consensus uh, modifications to to make the chain faster. And probably the most important thing is we're working on uh, getting the uh, tokenomics down for the gas token, which is the XN distribution project, because we want uh, most of the people who ever interacted with uh, Zen assets to get XN so that they can use the chain. Um, and there will be various ways to, to, to get that. Uh, we already talked about Zen Burn. Uh, a lot of people burn Zen for other projects like DB Zen, uh, various other things. So all of that is already accounted uh, for, and uh, those will be the airdrops. Uh, Zen NFT airdrops obviously is a big part of it. We're currently debating the, uh, the schedule of uh, multipliers. So like specifically if you have Zenturian or Rather, if you have an Apex, uh, what is the difference there? Or if you have a limited uh, ZNFT, is there a rarity score that actually multiplies your XN airdrop? Uh, whether you need to burn it or if you don't burn it, things like that. Um, we're also working on the idea for uh, native uh, liquid staking where you stake your ETH and you get X ETH out that you can trade and uh, also stake uh, in some other protocols, like potentially Eigenlayer. And uh, we're going to be introducing a concept called uh, Merged Yield, where you get the Lido style yield, and then also the XN yield on the Ethereum chain. So Ethereum will, uh, uh, the staked Ethereum will give you the X ETH, which is the staking token, plus you get two yields, which is the native Ethereum and yield on X1 itself. So that's uh, a lot of work, obviously, because part of it is game theory, part of it is the economics. Uh, then there's a lot of technological stuff, uh, but we have a good group. Uh, there's a lot of people in the validator group that are working to get the, the node set up properly, testing various hardware configurations to make sure that the chain is fast and doesn't have any faults. Uh, and I think uh, a couple of days ago, we just crossed uh, 100 million transactions uh, in, about a, uh, in about, I would say, three weeks. So the chain was uh, load tested and uh, we passed that uh, 100 million milestone successfully. What will be the, the, the number one reason to for new people to come to X1? Well, I think uh, X1 at its core is very innovative in a way that how a consensus is going to be set up. Uh, most of the chains out there, and if we, if we talk about uh, the, the blockchain technology landscape in general, uh, if you think of uh, Bitcoin blockchain and Ethereum, those are, uh, I would say like class one, or Evolution 1 blockchains, uh, where Solana, Avalanche, Cardano, they're like level two, class two. So we're working something that's uh, like generation three. And generation three, uh, the big difference there is we're trying to maintain uh, atomic composability where you don't have to fragment the chain into different subchains. Like for example, uh, Ethereum loses a lot of atomic composability with the use of uh, Arbitrum and Optimism and Polygon chains where users are forced to leave Ethereum due to the high gas, execute their transactions elsewhere, but then suffer from uh, the, f uh, the fact that uh, Optimism and Arbitrum uh, And many other chains like Binance as well, they're, they're really centralized. They can stop the chain, roll back transactions, they can censor you. So that's kind of like 
an unhappy situation with uh, with the chain uh, world today. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to maintain uh, super high speed atomic composability where you don't have to fragment your chain into pieces just to to make it uh, inexpensive to transact on and maintain value and decentralization. What is the incentive for Xen once X1 exists? Well, I think obviously that's one of the most important questions. So Zen was always designed as an ecosystem builder token. And why is it an ecosystem builder token? Well, when the gas was cheap, it was easy to acquire. You could run your mint for five days and get some free tokens basically with minimum amount of gas spent. Now, people obviously figured out a way to optimize and do uh, max mints with maximum number of wallets, spending the most money on gas, and some people hit really expensive gas. So, um, but still, like even though you're spending money on gas, you're, you're not buying the token, even though you have that option now that there's enough liquidity. And so I think uh, Zen will continue to, to build the community because it is used for many other projects, including X1. So like DB Zen is one of those projects and there's many other projects that are coming up that use Zen as currency. Uh, we potentially plan to continue to develop uh, more things on um, X1 and use Zen ecosystem for uh, continuous airdrops of all kinds. And also like, for example, let's say that there is an important developer that comes to X1 ecosystem and they want to bootstrap uh, the community by airdropping some of their tokens. Like how would they do that? Well, with X1, obviously they can't really airdrop to all of the addresses on X1 because it's gonna be a lot of addresses out there. However, anybody who is holding Zen on 12 different chains, including Bitcoin, by the way, can get an airdrop, for, uh, targeted airdrop from the developer uh, that develops a new project and they want to bring in more people uh, towards X1, towards what they're building. So that is very useful. Uh, and Zen obviously currently, I believe, at half a million addresses. So technically all of those addresses can be used for marketing of new projects on X1 uh, ecosystem. You already mentioned that right now, um, that, that there's other projects um, which are able to get an allocation and an airdrop for X1, like DBXN. Um, how much are you connected with these projects and how much do you support them? Well. I mean, obviously, we're part of the same community, so we, we talk to them a lot. And uh, like, for example, in case of DBZen, uh, they, they've been building the new NFT marketplace called Mastodon that we're working on integration within the Zen.network website. So, so yeah, I mean, like, uh, people are welcome uh, to build uh, with Zen. And I think one of the benefits there is that you don't have to uh, you don't have to find new users because all of the users out there that are familiar with Zen will be immediately accessible uh, to your new project if it exists within the X1 uh, ecosystem. So it's, uh, and again, like the whole plan was like, a lot of people ask me why did we launch on 12 different chains? Well, it's actually was uh, two, two reasons to do it. One reason was to, uh, just let people experience all the chains out there. Uh, like, for example, if uh, if you feel like that gas is too expensive on Ethereum, you can go to Binance Chain, or you can go to Polygon, or Avalanche and Phantom, and you get experience using those chains, which is really good. And also, Zen ends up tapping into those communities, including Pulse Chain, by the way. So, like Pulsicons that are hanging out on Pulse Chain can play with Zen and. Uh, Obviously, they get into a list of all the addresses that uh, uh, that can be used for further airdrops from all of the projects from X1 ecosystem. So, and the second reason uh, uh, for Zen uh, to go to all those chains was actually to test uh, the chain's limitations so that we can learn uh, what we can do better with X1. Will there be a stable coin, a native or a forked one? on X1? 
I personally didn't think about it yet and uh, don't have any concrete plans. But I think uh, there's probably a need for that to create stability of the assets. So potentially we'll uh, either do it ourselves or work with someone to, to get that done. Um, are you still working on the cross-chain bridge, like a layer zero um, between Bitcoin and Ethereum? Yeah, so we're, we're actually working with the, with the layer zero guys and uh, we tested a couple of their protocols that they suggested that we should use. Uh, their stuff is pretty advanced. It's better than uh, like Plasma Bridge, for example, that runs to Polygon and various other bridges. Um, uh, they have uh, some limitations where I think not all of their stuff is yet open sourced. So I really like to have their project to be fully open source so that anybody can uh, uh, join their relay network so that uh, it becomes more decentralized and less controlled by them as an entity. And I would feel more comfortable uh, getting them implemented once they open source. Yeah, but, but they have good tech and uh, its UX is really good. It's not too expensive. And so far, all of the stuff um, that we tested works really well. How could X1 and Pulse Chain in a perfect world support themselves? Uh, well, I think uh, obviously uh, we're, we're aligned on many similar principles such as decentralization. I think Pulse Chain has a lot of uh, uh, strong validators and a good validator community and it's really different than like, for example, like Polygon chain that runs only 100 nodes and a lot of them are centralized. Uh, Phantom is 50 nodes. Uh, I think Binance is like 10 nodes and it's all owned by Binance. OKX is the same thing. So in the world of many chains, I think Pulse chain is definitely is more aligned with the decentralization principles such as X1 as well. Uh, we don't want to compromise on decentralization. Uh, I, I think in, in a si similar category, uh, Solana is also very well decentralized, even though a lot of people don't understand uh, how they're decentralized because they call it a VC chain. But I think like uh, in the world of crypto, in the world of blockchains, there's a lot of chains that call themselves like first principles blockchains, but they're really not that it's mostly corporations that uh, run exchanges that are also launching chains just to attract more capital through the decentralized wallets but it's really just plugging it into an api that's controlled by the companies so it's just not really what uh, uh, the chains were supposed to be so i think uh, in this particular case pulse chain nx1 and solana uh, are really kind of like more aligned towards the first principles. Okay, do you have a favorite Zen or blockchain? Well, uh, it's like it's like saying who is uh, which one of your children is the most favorite, right? Like you, you're not really supposed to make a distinction. Well, I know I know which one's not my favorite. It's the one where it got censored. So uh, it got censored on Doge Chain, unfortunately, uh, which is not cool because. It, but it kind of like exposed Doge Chain for not being like a true chain because they're like, okay, you know, this this project is causing too much congestion. Let's get rid of it. Um, I think. Um, I would say if I were to choose, I would say it's Ethereum and Pulse Chain, uh, just because I have a lot of like good Pulsecon friends uh, that, uh, you know, support the project and having a lot of fun with Zen and ZenFTs on both chains, both Ethereum and Pulse Chain. Uh, so it makes sense to for me to just like if I talk to more people here and there, then, well, I guess those assets are more dear to my heart, like so to speak. And I also have a, a pretty good amount of Zen now on Ethereum. Uh, and obviously, likewise, I have the OG uh, classic Zen uh, that's been copied over on Pulse Chain. I don't have a lot of Zen anywhere else, but I did test it everywhere. 
but I would say like Ethereum was like the number one, the first one that uh, we got experience with launching. So probably it's like my favorite. You touched on this earlier already, um, but you could you summarize the tokenomics for the X1 coin? What, what is the plan for the X1 coin? The XN. Uh, XN token or coin, so that's a gas uh, uh, native token that uh, people will be using to interact with the chain. So I think we are we're starting with a billion supply, and we want to take a large chunk of it, decide on the amount of time uh, for the distribution, and uh, give it to all of the people who ever interacted with the Zen assets everywhere on all the chains and uh, basically see what happens. Obviously, uh, very important to mention that Zenblocks has been a very, very powerful project uh, that gives a lot of uh, dynamic elements to X1 blockchain because it's a proof of work uh, system that allows for, uh, um, uh, basically you can take your fiat which is your dollars or your euros or whatever, you can rent a GPU and start mining Zenblocks XNM token we call Zenium. And this is one way you can get crypto actually without ever buying crypto without the crypto, which is very unique. So you don't have to go to MoonPay and take your fiat from your credit card or whatever and convert to some crypto with a markup. You're literally building new crypto from the first principles of, uh, of proof of work. So that is one way that uh, you can get into X1 essentially with Zenium and also uh, you will be able to stake your Zenium for XN yield. So that's one way that you can do the proof of work, stake your XNM. Well, first of all, you get, you're going to get a distribution of it on uh, X1 once the mainnet launches, which integrates both delegated proof of, proof of stake which is, by the way, very, very interesting. Uh, Ethereum, for example, does not have delegation uh, over the stake. You have Lido that delegates it for you using their own uh, validators. But uh, in the system we're using, which is a fork of Phantom, it's a delegated proof of stake with a uh, pretty good user experience where you can get your XN somehow, whether you buy it or get it through an airdrop, and you can delegate it towards your favorite uh, validator and start earning yield, and the validator also gets a cut which is pretty cool. So there's a lot of interesting dynamics of how you can uh, make more yield, uh, make your XN more valuable, uh, and participate uh, within the crypto economy of the chain. What makes X1 unique compared to all the other blockchains? I can literally talk for about an hour about this. <laughs> 